How's it going, everyone? I've been getting a lot of comments, negative comments, of people that think they know what they're talking about regarding kickback. So, your kickback point on a chainsaw bar is this area right here. Where it starts to roll down to the center. You cannot get a kickback cutting from the bottom of the bar down in your normal fashion. With bar tip exposed to nothing but air, you cannot get a kickback. You see me doing cuts with one hand, I'm demonstrating the cutting power. I am always off to the side when I'm doing a one-handed cut demonstration like that. In the odd case that something were to fly out of nowhere and grab the tip of my bar and launch it back. It's going to go right by me. I assess the ground in front before I do such demonstrations, but people don't take the concept of that and it says, oh my god, you're going to kill yourself. So, you'll also see me one-handing when I'm doing a back cut. I'm holding the tree looking up in case something goes wrong, I'm out of there. I push myself away. The saw is cutting bottom bar into the tree, dogged in. It cannot kick back if the tip is in open air. If I'm barred in, like it's a real big tree and I'm maxed out my bar and I plunge in there, sure, it can launch out because it's actually hitting wood in there at this point right here and can push the saw out. You will not see me one-handing, holding the tree, looking up, cutting, if that's the case. Uh, another scenario, if there's a really loaded bucking cut that I have to do, the tree's just in a bad spot. I'm going to reach way out and just get that last little bit in case I have to bounce out of there or something explodes. I want to be as far away from that tree as possible. Um, another avenue of that is one-handed cut. Well, the last part of the tree, you know you got to get out of there fast. If you've got both hands on the saw, you're that much closer to harm's way. If you're out at an arm's reach and you tickle that off, you're a whole arm's length away, plus whatever your saw bar is, away from the dangerous situation. You will cut in dangerous situations, period. There's no getting around it. If you're a professional cutter, you will be cutting in situations that are against every code in the book. It's going to happen. Nature just throws it at you. It's the name of the game. So, back to the kick part. <laughs> the kick back part. Pardon me, I, I'm still during, I have a flu, so bear with me. So, you can plunge cut, but you have to start, you can plunge cut top bar, but you've got to start back here, and then once you get buried in enough, you can turn the bar and plunge in. If you just try and walk up to this piece of wood here and be like, all right, I'm going to try it, it's going to walk right away from you, and it's going to be fast. My saws are spinning 14,500 RPMs. They're hot. You just can't jam it straight into a tree. Some of it is thinking, oh, you're going to kick back. Uh, you don't know what you're doing. They're going to do that, and it's going to kick back. Professionals know how to work the tip of their saw. There's times where I will purposely get on the tip of this bar to have it walk back out. There's times it's convenient. Not at full squirt. Like, you just, you're idle, and you give it a little blip to walk your saw up somewhere. It's a lazy thing, but you know, both hands on the wheel, sure, blow up, work your way up something. Uh, so yeah, again, this is your kickback area. I have, if you're bucking with something on the other side and you're doing a bottom cut up, like another log or whatever firewood, yeah, it hits that, it's gonna want to shoot out of the cut. You got to be holding on. You're hooking that thumb, remember. You're not doing this, which I see a lot of people doing. You catch me all the time with my thumb on the bar because I'm pressing, but it's still not the best. You want to be hooked. If you're in a position where you know that there is a real likely chance you're going to get a kickback, you wrap that thumb. If your saw is in proper working order, you get a hard shake on the saw, it activates your brake. If your brake is on, not on. Your brake is off and you drop the saw, you'll notice it engages. If you get a hard shake on your saw, it shouldn't activate that brake. 
So it's not just the reaction of your hand hitting that that'll stop the chain. It's a good jolt, and you will get a really good jolt if you pop something at 14,500 RPMs and it wants to throw the thing out. It's a jolt. Had it happen a bunch of times, and it stops the chain. The brake engages, and it stops. So yeah, many scenarios you'll see professional cutters doing things that are against the book, but they have to be done. That's the life of a cutter. But no, if this is exposed to thin air, there is no way that it will kick back in a downward pulling cut. The chain is pulling against the saw when you're bottom bar cutting. It's pulling. So it's sucking itself into the wood. It cannot in thin air when this is exposed to thin air, launch out of there. It's physically impossible. So there's a little bit of a rant and rave of a little bit of my knowledge on the danger zone. And do's and don'ts and things that just will be done. And you'll see us professionals do it. Educate yourself before you leave these, oh my god, you're going to murder yourself comments. Know the saw, know what you're talking about. These commenters that don't have the knowledge on it, we can debunk you every time in every situation. Because we know what we're doing, we know how the saw reacts. If you're just some weekend firewood cutter that runs your saw a couple times a year, you're not going to have near the experience on what's going on with your machine as we are that cut every day. So, think before you comment, and I hope you learned something from this video. I'm always learning from other people. Everybody's learning. If you're running a saw, it's a learning experience. You don't just, a couple years down the road, you're good, and that's as far as you're going to get. No, you're always learning something else. So let's just all learn something else.